The five biggest lies told by the New York Times. The New York Times likes to think of itself as the paper of record or the gold standard of journalism. But the paper, which has been controlled by the same family for over 100 years, has a history of publishing lies and misinformation on some of history's most significant events. Let's go through five of the biggest lies published by the New York Times. Number five, the Hunter Biden laptop story. Despite overwhelming evidence from the start that the documents, images, and recordings from the Hunter Biden laptop were authentic, the New York Times initially refused to report on the story. And then when it was clear that the story wasn't going away, the paper ran an article suggesting that the laptop and its contents should be dismissed because they were part of a Russian disinformation campaign. But the laptop story was a really big deal with real world implications. In addition to a series of embarrassing photos and videos on the laptop, there were many emails from the device which pointed to sketchy business dealings between the Biden family and foreign operatives connected to the Chinese and Ukrainian governments. According to polls, roughly 17% or 14 million Americans who voted for Biden would have changed their vote had they known about the Hunter Biden laptop story, meaning the concerted effort by the New York Times and others to censor and then dismiss the laptop story likely changed the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Lie number four, the Russian collusion hoax. The New York Times was the chief disseminator of the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. The paper put out a multitude of uncorroborated and false articles suggesting that Trump and the Russian government were closely coordinating with each other in the lead up to the 2016 election. As just one of many examples, in 2017, the New York Times published an article headline, quote, Trump campaign aides had repeated contacts with Russian intelligence. In that piece, the Times stated that Trump's 2016 campaign had been in repeated contact with senior Russian intelligence officials during his presidential campaign. But the contents of that Times article, like many others published by the Times, were completely false. What's more incredible is the fact that the New York Times refused to retract the reporting and doubled down on it, even after FBI officials, who were no fans of President Trump, called the stories inaccurate and misleading. Lie number three, Russian bounty on U.S. soldiers. In June of 2020, the New York Times published an article which stated that Russia had offered bounties or financial rewards to the Taliban for every American soldier that they killed in Afghanistan. The Times article further indicated that President Trump had been briefed on this Russian bounty plot, but he didn't take any action on the information because, after all, Trump is a Russian asset, as the Times repeatedly suggested. Of course, this story turned out to be completely false. There was never any evidence to back it up. Still, this story was a really big deal. When you have a megaphone as big as the New York Times, it's incredibly dangerous to play fast and loose with the facts and publish a false article that Russia is paying terrorists to kill Americans. Because if that were true, it would be grounds for a war between the world's two largest nuclear powers. Apparently, galvanizing Americans towards a nuclear Armageddon is a risk that the New York Times is willing to take, so long as it makes the orange man look bad. Now on to the second biggest lie by the New York Times, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. In 2002, New York Times reporter Judith Miller wrote numerous articles based on unnamed sources claiming that Saddam Hussein, quote, already had or was acquiring an arsenal of weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs. Once again, these false stories published by the Times were a really big deal with serious real world consequences. To this day, many people consider the Times reporting on Saddam's non-existent WMDs to be a driving force behind the Bush administration's decision to go to war in Iraq. And that war led to the deaths of 4,000 American soldiers, over 100,000 Iraqi civilians, and cost America over $2 trillion. Sadly, not much has changed over at the New York Times, though, which has already established itself as one of the biggest cheerleaders for increasing America's involvement in the Ukraine conflict with Russia. And that leads us to the number one most destructive lies published by the New York Times, which is the paper's whitewashing of genocide. Specifically, that would be the Soviet genocide of the Ukrainians and the Nazi genocide of the Jewish people. Let's start with the Soviet example. By now, it's fairly obvious the New York Times does not have a great track record in covering Russia. Today, the paper portrays Russia as this evil puppet master responsible for everything that goes wrong in the world. But that wasn't always the case. When Russia was the alpha dog communist nation in the Soviet Union, the New York Times often portrayed the nation in a pretty positive light. 
In the 1930s, Stalin deliberately engineered a famine to starve Ukrainians, which ended up in the deaths of 4 million men, women, and children in that country. But the New York Times and its star reporter at the time, Walter Duranty, disseminated Soviet propaganda to Americans, denying that the famine was going on. Had Americans not been brainwashed by the Times reporting and been apprised to the true evil of the Soviet regime, it would have almost certainly changed America and the rest of the world's view of the USSR. And millions could have been spared from falling under the hand of communist regimes, which is exactly what happened after World War II. Similarly, in the decade leading up to the war, the New York Times published glowing portrayals of Hitler and downplayed the Nazi regime's atrocities in Germany and throughout Europe. The Times even employed a devout Nazi to be its bureau chief in Berlin, and he presented news reports about Hitler and the Nazis in a very favorable light to European politicians, intellectuals, and American readers back home. Imagine how many lives would have been saved if Americans had not been misled by the Times and were informed about Hitler's atrocities several years before World War II began. The fact is, if you had a family member or friend who lied to you repeatedly for nearly a century about some of the world's most significant events, you would never give them the benefit of the doubt or believe anything they say. It's time we hold the New York Times to that same standard.